Hi, my name is Leah Alcala. I teach eighth grade math, and this is my warm up routine that I do with my students almost every day. I call it my favorite no. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, you guys. Your warm up is on the board. I'm going to hand out your index cards. I put a warm up problem on the board, hand out index cards to all the kids, have them write their answer, I collect it, and then I sort it. And I say yes, no, yes, no. And I look for my favorite wrong answer, or my favorite no, and we analyze that. Four minutes to work on it. Everyone makes mistakes. We're going to see your mistakes, you're going to see my mistakes. But a mistake is your opportunity to share with me how much you understand. And if I don't know that you don't know something, I need to teach you before the test. The test is too late. And this is a great spot for me to teach you. Make sure your name is on your card. Put your pencil in your pencil slot and pass your cards to the center. I started my warm-up routine to replace clickers that a lot of classes are buying. So that was a clicker for each student. You ask a question, they lock in an answer. And then you look at your computer screen and you know what percentage of your students understand the problem. Well, we didn't have the money for that, so instead... Okay, here we go. I thought, well, what if I gave everyone index cards, collected them real quick with their answers already written on it, and then I can just sort them as quick as possible yes. and find out what percentage of my kids know the answer. No. Yes. Costs 40 cents instead of $15,000. Yes, so we have quite a few yeses and some very interesting no's. One, two, three, four. I then took that a step further, something I couldn't do with clickers. Look at the ones who are getting it wrong, how far are they from getting it right, and showing that work to the other kids. Okay, my favorite no, someone wrote this. I say it's my favorite no because I want the kids to first of all recognize what they're about to see is wrong, and I want them to recognize that there's something good in the problem. Like, there's a mistake, but it's my favorite no because Equals. it showed some good math. So that's the wrong answer. But they did some things that I love. What in that problem am I happy to see? We always talk about what's right first, so that if it's any student's work, they are like, oh, I did do that right. There's a mistake but the mistake didn't ruin the whole thing. What do I like about this problem? Gavin. Well, um, they distributed both um, with the 4x and the negative 2. Very nice. And what Today's lesson was on factoring, so I needed to make sure they understood how to distribute. They distributed, and what, what lets you know that they distributed? David? Uh, how there are no more parentheses. There are no more parentheses, and they didn't just drop the parentheses. So they're count. asked to distribute a term with a variable. They're asked to distribute twice. They're asked to distribute a term with a negative sign, which is often a very common mistake that kids make. And my students do not. like. I have three years of CST data now to show that one mistake my students do not make is distributing a negative, which is amazing, because they used to all the time. Distributing negative 2 to negative 6 is positive 12. And that was one mistake I was absolutely looking for and I did not see, which made me very happy. Not until the very end, as we've gone over different sections of the problem that are right, that I will then ask, okay, now what is incorrect. What does this person not understand? Where is the mistake? If I get a third of my class raising their hand ready to tell me the mistake, that it's pretty high engagement at that point. Mia? Um, like 4x times 2x mm -hmm. equals um, 8x squared. Very nice. This 4x times 2x multiplies to 8x squared. Can someone convince me of that? How do we know that 4x times 2x is 8x squared?
My low-level students are very engaged. They feel like they're not getting penalized for being wrong. They're not being made fun of. I'm not looking at them. No, there's no peer pressure at this point. But they're like, wow, that's my mistake. And now I understand. It's very comforting. I mean, I feel very with my kids at all times. I'm not surprised by what they don't know. They're not surprised by what they don't know. It's how it should be. It creates more of a dialogue with me and them.